Hello, folks. Welcome back. I'm the one, the only. I'm Hobo Tom. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, before I get into stuff, as always, as per my tradition, on the hobo list, Patrix. You, sir, get that six count. Yes, he probably, <laughs> he actually probably did. I think he actually made a reference to something or he said something in reference to me that, that, that Bailey and, and Sasha do to each other in, in their nether regions. Yes. So with that, I'd like to welcome everyone. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. There is one major programming note. Um, and this is, this is kind of a maybe if ish, um, if, if, if something works, um, tomorrow night, I think it's going to be triple mania. I'm not sure if it is triple mania, you will see Eho del Vagabundo. No, Eho del, I always forget his name. Eho del Hobo El Vagabundo. Why do they have such complex names? Um, he might be hosting the show for Triple Mania. And again, this is Triple Mania. Oh. Unless they've changed something up. This is full. This could be full wrestling content. At least for one night. Um, I'll tell you what. If, oh, I don't think so, but yeah, it might be full wrestling content that one night. This is triple me. This is triple A we're talking about freaking. They don't care about their own wrestlers theme music, much less what I do. They're probably just happy freaking he's there. 
Um, I don't think I would get blocked. I don't know. We shall find out, though. Because then... Because then it's going to be... I think it's uh, uh, December, January, February. Yeah. If right things happen, and, and if I can get Eho del hobo el vagabundo in he at least might i think it's good i think they were supposed to break it up to like two days sunday's too much um that's not happening one day triple mania is pretty good so that's a little bit of the programming notes so there might be some show tomorrow night we'll see i do need i do need the views and subscribers though so you never know. But let's talk about some SmackDown. Interesting show. Um, I'm just gonna say the fact that they split up the New Day was interesting. I'm gonna go through, I guess, the first day of the draft, and then yeah, I'll get to the wrestling then. So as far as the draft goes, it was. Okay, only Stephanie McMahon was there. Adam Pierce. Adam Pierce did something special because he's being featured a heck of a lot more nowadays. Oh, and look at all that. I just realized I just took a look at my, my free disk space, like, like well over here in, in my corner, and I'm like, whoa, I have all this disk space? Yeah, I cleaned up my computer yesterday. So it's probably running a lot better, which is always good. So the, the WWE draft, which is the most useless and probably boring thing, and Stephanie McMahon was really the only person there. So it, it felt kind of useless. Because at least if there's two people, like even if it was Adam Pierce on one side and Stephanie McMahon on the other side, or like a computer on one side, Stephanie in the middle, and Adam Pierce on one side, it would have been better. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, so Raw, and for the most part, no one really changed either. I mean, I think Naomi came over to SmackDown. Who cares about that? Miz and Morrison went over to... Um, I'm sorry, um, Naomi went over to Raw. Miz and Morrison went over to Raw. There were like one or two things that were big. Other than that, everything stayed the same. So for Raw, they got Drew McIntyre, Asuka, the Hurt Business, who are already there. They moved AJ Styles over. I think Naomi they moved over. Whatever. Uh, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are on Raw, but they defend their belts on all brands. Uh, Ricochet is still there. Mandy Rose is still on Raw. Miz and Morrison moved. That was interesting. Um, so we'll see what happens. Then they move Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods over to Raw. I don't know. They might unify the tag team belts at Hell in a Cell. Or they move the Street Profits to SmackDown. And they just kind of switch belts. I have no idea. Um, I'm, the fact that they broke up the New Day was kind of interesting. That We'll see how that goes. It's Biggie getting his kind of singles push. Uh, Dana Brooks over on Raw. We've seen that already. Angel Garza is, all, Angel Garza is already over on Raw. Meh. Uh, for SmackDown, they still have Roman Reigns. They got Seth Rollins. I'm like, oh good, they're going to be done with this famous Mysterio thing. They're just going to restart on SmackDown, and I'll tell you why. So they have Seth Roll so they have uh, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, um, Sasha Banks, Bianca Bel Belair. That's kind of a move, I guess. Unless they move the Street Profits over, then that's a moot point. Jey Uso is still there. They moved Ray and Dominic Mysterio over. They kept Big E, and they kept Otis. So really the only two big moves to SmackDown is going to be Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio and Dominic Mysterio. 
Yeah, not that exciting. But that's okay. So let's get to some action. It starts off, I'll tell you what, amazingly. This, I understand why they had the main event the way it was. But with this, uh, with Big E versus Sheamus in a street fight, this was great. Um, starts off as a big brawl. Um, then Sheamus is a big shoulder tackle. Then uh, picked up Big E for a rolling senton. Big E launches himself through the ropes. I thought Big E almost killed himself because he hit Sheamus. So he goes through ropes. Here's Sheamus. Hits Sheamus and then like falls right down. So that looked ugly. Um, then like underneath the ring, there were like bootios. I thought they got rid of that theory a while ago. Who knows? Um, there were some like bootios. They just look like big oversized donuts. And why they're underneath the ring getting coronavirus, who knows? Or probably laden with coronavirus. Um, but then there's so many kendo sticks. Uh, they both trade blows to the outside. Big E gets tied up. And then it gets this, 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 this whacked. And to old people like me, you could almost imagine Seamus saying, What's your name, boy? What's your name, boy? And Biggie going, Kunte Kinte, Kunte Kinte. Oh, that might be right. I don't, I don't think that's racist. That was in the movie Roots. I'm old. I'm allowed to say things. I'm getting to that age where, where I don't give anything anymore. I'm getting there, though. It's like, yeah. If that's the worst thing I ever say on YouTube, I'm doing pretty good, I think. Again, I've had many black friends. I've had black girlfriends. Um, I've disliked black people. I've called black people very bad things in the past. Um, again, if you're going to be driving a tricked out car, like swerving between lanes, thinking that parts of Nova Road is the Daytona 500, you might get some interesting words Toss in your direction too. Because my ex girlfriend was absolutely shocked that I used the one term. I was driving calmly down, and all of a sudden, this car, like, yeah, we're going all, yeah, 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 playing all kinds of weird music, passed us, and literally like, cut us right off. And, like, we were, I think we were in the right hand lane, so they got into the middle lane, cut us off, and, like, made a right hand turn. I use some very, probably bad words to describe that person's ethnicity, which I'm not necessarily proud of. But yeah, I said it though, because at the time I meant it. When someone cuts you off like that with with, with your your significant other in your vehicle, you might say very bad things. It was a semi-emotional moment. Um. She looked at me funny and said, well, you really shouldn't say that, but they were a bunch of jerks. So, yeah. <laughs> and with that, again, I can understand why Hulk Hogan said what he said again. You have a man spending his entire life. I'm, I'm not defending it, but I can rationalize it. And the fact that, yeah, he was this over-the-top character using over-the-top words when his own family was involved. I'll give him the pass for that. Um, I, I, I might scrutinize things he says closely. But still, eh. He's old. I like that excuse. You know, a lot of people are using excuses. Oh, it's because of Spanish. You know, my excuses? Eh, I'm old. <laughs> See how that goes over at work. Um. So yeah, so 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 Biggie gets gets beat on with a kendo stick, um, and then Biggie Pollyano, I'm very upset with you, Biggie. That's gimmick infringement. Otis shouldn't be being sued. You should be being sued. Um, he duct taped Sheamus's ankles for like a moment, nowhere nearly as well. As Yano duct taped the ankles of one Kenny Omega back in the day. Um, and then beat, beat him with a kendo stick. And then they go outside and then 
I don't know what happened because I took a quick shower. And I think because of my, my player, you have to hit play every time they come back from commercial break. Because during commercial break, they play music videos. It goes cool. You got to see Chuggo and Shakeswell. That's good stuff. Right. Come on, effing guy. I'll put you in the leg lock. The headlock. Yes. Um, so, yeah, like, Biggie has stuff all over his head. It looks like he got, like, powder thrown on him. Who knows what that... I don't even know what that was. Um, Seamus. Man. He was... At, he found a tire iron. I could have sworn that was going to be the end of the match. That old hospitalization angle. The white noise on top of the windshield for the second time. I have no idea how, how and or why Biggie would kick out besides the fact that that wasn't the end of the match. Um, and then, then Biggie used the door. The car door to beat Biggie with. So good. And it was going to go in the trunk. He was going to... Uh, Seamus teased breaking of Biggie's arm with the trunk. But then Biggie put his foot up. Uh, Seamus broke kicked the, the trunk, wrecked that, wrecked that car. Uh, Seamus got power bombed on the car, and his, his oiled up, pasty white, bloody body slid right down the car hood. It was kind of funny. Um, both these men, they put their bodies on line. I say bravo, gentlemen. Uh, they're both cut up. They both had. Genuine blood, because I don't care who you are. You get put through any type of glass. You're bleeding, baby. It doesn't matter. Then, yeah. Shame's pasty white body. <laughs> Slides right down. That was just so funny. Um, and then uh, Biggie hits a big ending through a table. That looked like it was the, the COVID check table because i know when i was at the racetrack you had to go in they scanned your forehead and then they put like a bracelet around you and it said like like you were all you were like 100 percent all clear to go i think they did this here in the amway center as well mainly for the wrestlers kind of staff not so much fans but like the staff they have to be have to have like a certain bracelet on saying yeah you you pass all of a freaking forehead scanner, which, tr trust me, sometimes that forehead scanner is broken. Because I think for like three months, my body, my forehead temperature was like 94 degrees. I want to say technically I was dead at work. Because my body temperature was either too low or it, was, or it was like, or it registered like 94 degrees. Which I think is dead. Or it makes me a zombie, which is not good either. But yeah, um, Biggie won with a bit, big ending through, again, the COVID check table. This was really fun. It was a little bit bloody, as the way it should be, in the proper amount of blood. They weren't gushing blood, but you could tell, again, glass cuts, um, abrasions from kendo sticks. It made sense. It was good stuff. <sighs> this was I can't believe I'm I'm saying this about Sheamus, but this was a surf and turf match. Then they had a little thing with um oh Biggie and Kofi and Xavier Woods. The New Day is back, or at least it was back again before the draft split them up, which kind of sucks. Because they were allowed to draft the entire Hurt business, but then they split up the New Day. Doesn't make any sense. Wrestling! Jey Uso cuts a promo. Oh, I'll tell you what. Xavier Woods, during his whole rehab thing, he got jacked. He's slim, trim, rough, buff, cut, chiseled, and jacked. Or is he the rough, ready, and rambunctious one? I forget. But that's okay. Whatever whatever it is, Xavier Wood lo looks like in phenomenal shape. Looks like he put on like, like muscle in the upper body. I have no idea what his lower body was like. But you saw him, it's like, damn, he got big in them shoulders. 
So yeah, Xavier Woods is jacked. Um, New Day's back for a little bit. Um, so now Jey Uso cuts a promo. Paul Heyman's there. And Roman Reigns says, this is going to be a special Hell in a Cell match. It's going to be an I quit in a Hell in a Cell match. So they have the gimmick inside of the gimmick. That should be interesting. Then we have Jeff Hardy and, and Matt Riddle. Jeff Hardy in no way should be anywhere near Matt Riddle. Taking on the Miz and Morrison. Uh, they, sell, they, they didn't mention one year of sobriety for Jeff Hardy. <laughs> that went down the tubes off like probably before and after this match. Um, that fisherman suplex by, by Matt Riddle was amazing. The Bro Tree. Bro Tree in motion. That's right. On to John Morrison. They did the Bro Tree in motion. Bro Tree in mayhem. I'm sorry. On to the Miz on the outside. Morrison with the neck crank. I still can't believe they're using John Morrison as a freaking jobber. It's such a waste of his talents. He should go back. He should just go back to Impact Wrestling and be Johnny Mundo. Like, not Johnny Impact, but just be Johnny Mundo again and just be amazing. At WWE, every so often, they, they really drop the ball with some of these pro wrestlers. Some of these, some of this most amazing talent. I'm sure John Morrison is, is really happy about that paycheck he's getting. But, yeah. You're Johnny Mundo. You are utterly amazing. Lucha Underground and Impact Wrestling, your your matches were, were amazing to follow. Now, now you're a jobber with The Miz and WWE. As long as you're happy, dude. Uh, uh, whatever. Um, Matt Riddle then hits the T-Bone Suplex on both Miz and Morrison. Miz eats the Bro Derek. Miz loses. Of course, Miz is getting shipped off. To Raw, but then Lars Sullivan. Oh no, it was um Dan Matha. But Lars Sullivan's also pretty close. I'm the hammer. You're the nail. Whap. Uh Lars Sullivan returns. He wrecks both Jeff and Matt Riddle. And <laughs> it's actually Miz's turn to get wrecked. Poor Miz. Yep, he's going to be taking some time off to be with a second baby. Again, congratulations, Miss. And they're going to have more um, Miss and Misses. So that's always good to see. Then, uh, and that that was a that was a good that was a good enough match. I like the fact that Lars Sullivan's back. <sighs> but gee, where they treat Johnny Mundo? It all moves though. Ugh, I'm so torn. This is like a grilled ham and cheese sandwich. Or it's just like a plain hamburger. And I'll always wind up going a little bit higher. This was a... I'll, I'll say, because Lars Sullivan showed up, it's a cheeseburger match. Then they have Sasha Banks taking on Bailey. Um, Sasha slaps Bailey before the bell. Sasha really goes to town, and then once the once they finally get separated, the bell rings. Uh, Sasha still sells. Sasha still sells. Say that five times fast. Her neck injury. Uh, Bailey goes after her neck. Um, Sasha does a roll up into the bank statement. Um, Bailey goes to the ropes. Bailey grabs the chair, gets a DQ, cheap win. The dusty win. It's the dusty ham sandwich, baby. Because with the DQ finish, again, uh, Sasha wins. Bailey retains the belt. Bailey's. Oh, yeah, Bailey wears black panties, by the way. Because we saw the tops of them. Like, I knew I was something around there. And yeah, Bailey has black panties on. 
I think that's a common color among wrestlers, wrestlers for some reason. Who knows? Again, only I, the great hobo Tom, noticed such intricacies about that. But yeah, this leads up to Sasha challenging Bailey in a Hell in a Cell match. Hell in a Cell is actually going to be fairly interesting. We shall see. Then we have the New Day taking of Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston taking on Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. Um, as far as this goes, it was, it was pretty much your typical fun style New Day match. The, that spike DDT. Wow, Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, I think Shinsuke Nakamura sold that like a freaking um, pro. Shinsuke is so happy. Shinsuke, he's like, yeah, well, it's my turn. Throw some some heavy knee strikes. Uh, Woods does a jawbreaker. Kofi gets in. It's that springboard DDT, which looked absolutely am- That looked kind of funky, though. I don't know what happened. That was like some weird botch thing that happened. This match was kind of spotty. It felt like they literally like put it together on the flight saying, yeah, we don't want to do this. This is going to look great. Uh-oh. Did not work. Um, Kofi eats the European uppercut, which is great. Xavier Woods gets Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, he does the flying elbow after the treble in paradise kick. And Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro drop the belt to the New Day. So this will be interesting to see this whole dynamic going into Raw. So we have new champs because uh, New Day rocks. New Day rocks. This was an okay match. That boss just looked freaking ugly. There were some other spots that just didn't seem right. This was a ham sandwich of a match, folks. Ooh, can I do this in three minutes? Let's see here. Then there was a course stuff. Otis, he has the sleeveless jacket on. Tucker Knight looks impeccably dressed for court. Um, well, can little continuation. Um, the Miz had a continuation. Otis, he has pens, he has stuff, he has court stuff, whatever. Um, then, yeah, Sasha Banks challenges Bailey to Hell in a Cell. That should actually be pretty decent. Then we have The Fiend versus Kevin Owens. Um, the cross by by The Fiend kind of starts off the match. The Fiend's absolutely amazing. Kevin Owens is like shocked. Like, on the outside, the Fiend has the clothesline from hell. Like Kevin Owens says, like the probably the most amazing flip ever from a clothesline. Um, a KO. Yeah, he's just getting beat up. That headbutt by the Fiend was good. KO. He tries to make his comeback. But every time he hit a big, big move like the DDT on the outside, the Fiend would just literally step up. Um, Kevin Owens hit a frog splash from the outside again. Fiend would lay there for like a few seconds. Just get straight up. Fiend no sell the entire match. Uh, then there was that Bosch pop up power bomb on the table. Again, this parts of the show were really good. Parts, parts, parts of every match were really good. Parts of it, parts of each match also fell rushed and said, "Hey, let's try, let's try this, and hope it works." And when you do that, trust me, more often than not, it never works. Second time, of course, works. The Fiend got up from that. He just no-sells. It's the Manable Claw. Uh, Kevin Owens tried the stunner, but no, the Manable Claw is still there. Uh, Kevin Owens gets pinned with said Mandible Claw. Of course, the lights go, oh. They flicker. Alexa Bliss shows up. Sister Abigail's there. He, she's the new valet to the Fiend. <sighs> not bad. It was a ham sandwich of a match. So with all that being said, for this cheeseburger raw, it was okay. It was enjoyable. I had my red wine and my pizza. I'm using my oversized uh, red wine glasses, which I will show you folks next week because I think I have the oversized Halloween glasses. Actually, I have them on my camera. Let's see here. So I wanted to send it to a friend. I'm back. Back. 
she never emailed me back she probably hates me but that's okay I'm used to being hit got my oversized wine glass happy hollow wine yes this glass holds like three quarters of a bottle of red wine it's amazing I don't have to refill stuff it's pretty cool that that has to get charged up while I do things and that was Smackdown interesting leads up to Raw again it was a cheeseburger of a show that being said, tomorrow, yeah, I can do that, because that's, that still gives me one day to do that, so yeah. Tomorrow, you might see Iho del Hobo el Vagabundo here. He might be going over a little bit of, like, Triple Mania, because again, this has been a while. Triple Mania is one of those fun shows. You never know what's going to happen. The first Triple Mania I watched before I actually figured out how to do this stuff. Um, you had Vampiro farting, him yelling at producers. La Parker came out to three different three musics. Um, <sighs> Psycho Clown was shooting flamethrowers, literally, a br literally like, like a foot above some like the kit, the people in the, f in that lined the ramps row head. So if like this is the ramp, the people were out here. So, so say the people were here, he just put his hands out and like shot flames like right over their head. Uh, the owner got, or the owner's wife, the deceased owner's, wait, the deceased owner's wife, who's now the owner, got splashed on my phoenix. And he looked on, he was like, oh my God, I didn't mean to really do that so hard. Look, uh, what else happened that? Oh, Matt Stryker was laughing at all the the, the nonsense. Like, Matt Stryker gave, gave, gave no Fs. He just took it all in. Vampiro would fart. He would yell at people. You could hear producers, like, yelling at him. And Matt Stryker's so they're like... <laughs> um, again, well, Parker came out to three different theme musics. And that was ridiculously funny. Triple Mania, they put like ten million dollars into their set. They put ten million dollars into their talent, and then they're like cheap on their production budget. Like most wrestlers came out, their theme music was late. Uh, it was just a mess. That was the first one I saw. The one I did a show to last year. I mean. Blue Demon Jr. The, the two notable the two notable things. Blue Demon Jr. literally like legit swung a hammer at the head of Dr. Wagner Jr. If that actually connected, that would have killed Dr. Wagner Jr. They were doing things like I think Dr. Wagner Jr. like legit broke his fingers when Blue Demon Jr. took the bell hammer to his fingers. There were some things that were just that's not ooh ouch that's that's a that's oh yeah um oh Chica Tormenta literally got carried out by EMTs in the middle of their match. Like all you see the EMTs come from underneath come from like the side of the stage. They put Chica Tormenta onto the cart and like literally like carry her off. And like the wrestlers are staring and saying, Oh well. Again, remember this is the same organization in which sexy star sh like like shoot dislocated the shoulder and or elbow of Rosemary. What else happened that show? Oh, it was just a freaking mess. Um El Hijo del Vikingo is utterly amazing. Like the battle royal they have is just freakishly good. You never know what's gonna happen. It's just it's just so chaotic. So again, I'll um Ijo del Hobo El Vagabundo Dos will try to cover at least Saturday part Sunday, I said no. I, I'm 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 getting wrestled out. 
I need, I'd like to do my own stuff. I, I need to try Quilo. So, yeah. But still, Saturdays should be pretty good. Because that means I do have to make stuff, too. I should do that now. But that's okay. Um, What else was there? What else was there? Was there a... Nino Hamburguesa. They have some big people doing amazing. doing moves they shouldn't be doing. And AAA. In fact, they, they, an Aerostar. Aerostar should never be allowed near a scissors lift. End of story. Or forklift. End of story. Or scaffolding. And, and, and that's, that's, that's it. So that's it for the show. Um, join El Hijo del Vagabundo. El, El Hobo Bente Cinco tomorrow. Um, maybe I'll cook him some dinner. No burritos for him. Just tacos. Or actually spaghetti. Maybe ravioli. So that's okay. Okay.